Well, I'm Linda Fintelberg for Business News, and I have Sam Mkukeli with me. He is a veteran journalist and political commentator. Sam, um, welcome to Business News. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Sam, um, many people have been commenting on Mr. Ramaphosa in the last well, months, actually, um, calling him a dead man walking. And you've recently written that he's like a deer caught in political headlights. So what's going on here? Look, Mr. Ramaphosa had an opportunity um, a week ago uh, to clarify this thing about uh, Russia uh, and America. And there's a simple answer. Uh, it would have been, would you sell arms to Russia? Uh, as a matter of principle, uh, what does South African law say uh, about this? Uh, what does he do? He goes on, he does the thing he's been doing uh, for six years now, uh, to appoint uh, retired judges, active judges, uh, to discuss this, uh, to discuss that. He's very slow. In moving. So last week, when he was in parliament, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, this thing uh, comes up uh, with the Americans, American uh, ambassador uh, throwing the cat among the pigeons. I could see Mr. Ramaphosa and the government. I mean, the, the image I have is somebody caught and he's just frightened uh, to the extent that he is crippled uh, by this uh, fear. Uh, he's caught out. He does not know what he's going to do. And he throws the can. Was to throw the can down the road or what does he do? So it was just a terrible moment for a leader of a government, a statesman, a powerful man who is actually the head effectively of, of, of the army. He's our, he's our commander in chief. He does not know how to answer a simple question. If he didn't have the details, then you go to the principle of the matter. Would you sell arms to Russia in the middle of a conflict? A yes or no? Then the second, what is domestic law about this? Uh, that's the, the, the other thing. What does the law say? The South African law does not allow us uh, to sell arms uh, to any country uh, in a conflict. So it either starts and ends there. He failed uh, dismally, instantly. He just got uh, terribly caught uh, in this uh, situation like a deer caught in a political headline. Yeah, good. Um, you're talking about kicking the can down the road. That's what he tends to do. And um, doesn't it take a simple call to his defense minister? Did we sell arms to... Are we selling arms to Russia? Did somebody export arms to Russia? Um, what would a public inquiry take another three years? Yeah, I mean, those are the, the shocking things. I mean, he should be able to... He is defined uh, the information uh, from the from his uh, the colleagues uh, in, uh, in 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 cabinet as to whether or not uh, we sold uh, arms uh, to Russia. In fact, the pretense that comes around it is that the South African government uh, learned for the first time last week that there was this problem with the Americans uh, that spoke out, which is not the case. We now know that this matter has been bubbling up uh, for months now. Uh, the, the Americans, uh, the Secretary of uh, Finance was in South Africa uh, in January, and the, she seems, uh, Janet Yellen, to have raised these matters with the Finance Minister, and she held a meeting that was off diary uh, with the President of the Republic, Cyril Ramaphosa. She also held a meeting uh, with Gwena Matashe at Minerals and, and, and Energy. So these issues have been uh, handled. Uh, Mr. Ramaphosa sent an envoy uh, to America to deal with this matter. So he shouldn't have been surprised uh, that uh, these matters have come out and needs to have had some sort of idea for how he would respond. Probably he would respond by appointing a retired judge as he seems to, uh, to prefer to do these things. And it's just a terrible thing when one loses an opportunity. He waits the perfect crisis uh, even. And now you're gonna have to find this judge and he's gonna have uh, meetings about meetings and money blown uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the process. Meanwhile, things are unfolding. So if you wanted to invest in South Africa and you wanted to take a decision today, and you could be sitting anywhere in the world and then we will look around what's going to happen. Is South Africa going to be sanctioned? Yes or no? Maybe we're not going to be sanctioned, but it adds a layer of risk to a whole lot of other risks. Energy risk uh, is an issue. Then there's the water risk. Then there's the security risk. Then there's something else and something else and something else. So we miss an opportunity uh, to act decisively uh, on these things. I mean, we've been struggling with the economic growth, and now you add this layer of uncertainty, and you think, ah, oh, my goodness, this country, what are we ever going to, how are we going to ever get out of the troubles uh, we have with our economy? Well, you've said um, the ANC is carrying, I think you said, a dead man to the polls. What does it mean for the ANC next door, uh, next year, with the election coming, having an indecisive leader at the top? Um, the ANC typically, I mean, it, it takes a lot of time to deal uh, with these things and, and, and catch on. 
it's also stuck with ideology. And uh, there's still uh, they that level of a denial around this thing. They're dealing with things at an ideological level. Uh, nobody's going to tell us uh, what to do as sovereign uh, at a public. And then commentators use this thing of the history uh, with old uh, uh, Soviet Union and their uh, support uh, for the AIDS. I doubt that uh, is, a, is, a, is a big factor. But these things will take a lot of time and to play themselves out within the minds of ANC leaders. And uh, then they start realizing uh, a bit uh, and later on uh, what uh, the issues are, the real issues are. The, the one issue that is the, the, the big issue here is that is Mr. Ramaphosa's approval ratings. He polls higher than the party itself. Uh, and also, the ANC's numbers uh, went bad by a uh, recent Ipsos uh, a poll that if there was a high uh, uh, participation in the election, the ANC could get around 50%. Now you're heading on a new factor where people may lose jobs uh, in the short term because of the economic difficulties and others and others. There's also palpable frustration uh, around uh, Mr. Ramaphosa and the ANC's uh, uh, slow uh, pace of, uh, of uh, delivery. So the next poll might start reflecting a different uh, outcome uh, altogether, or especially about uh, Mr. Ramaphosa's uh, ratings. It's only probably closer to the election when the ANC starts campaigning and they start having to answer very difficult questions from at least two million people who lost their jobs around the COVID uh, pandemic and haven't been able to get those jobs. So when the leaders are on the ground and they're campaigning, it's only then that they will start realizing that this is very difficult. In fact, uh, the burden of carrying a Ramaphosa to the polls is heavier than we actually thought. Then they start feeling that, oh, wait, this man is lifeless. And we are carrying somebody who is actually politically a ghost and he doesn't help us much. It's only then that they may start uh, panicking. Uh, quite first to, uh, what do we do? Do we take him to the polls? Is he going to hurt us uh, badly uh, around this? We don't know the extent of the reaction from the Americans. Uh, we're still going to see that through the coming BRICS uh, summit and how South Africa negotiates uh, around uh, Agoa uh, and uh, what that, uh, what the potential ramifications uh, of, of that uh, will be. We still have 12 months, very long term uh, in politics. Uh, right now, I mean, you would think that Ramaphosa was guaranteed to be on the, po on the posters for the ANC, but right now, uh, we're looking only at what we have today. The question mark now is should be around whether or not he is the guy the ANC should be taking uh, to the polls and to into a future after uh, that election. Well, what's the alternative? Paul Mashatile, who seems to be very friendly to the EFF. Yeah, there's that Mashatile EFF thing. Look, um, uh, on paper, he's a, he's a successor, right? He's the ANC's deputy president, the country's deputy president. You think that he, he has a chance. But and that's not a guaranteed thing as well. Also, this... Um, EFF uh, thing is one of those like uh, that uh, Swat Kafar, uh, Rui Kafar uh, 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 kind of thing. It's very likely that the ANC would sign with the EFF when Ramaphosa is around. And uh, you still really have a, a high probability uh, of uh, that happening. So whether or not there's an EFF Mashatile thing, that EFF factor is real with Ramaphosa. Uh, if he takes no decisions now, why would he take a decision when the ANC says after the election, we prefer to go into coalition with the EFF. So that EFF fear uh, with a Mashatile actually applies even with a Ramaphosa. It's not a done deal that Mashatile would be uh, the successor. We've had ANC deputy presidents uh, not becoming ANC presidents. Uh, we had Tassa Sulu, uh, uh, we had uh, Halima Motlante, uh, who was ANC deputy president and never became uh, the, the ANC president. So the ANC, the ANC has time now to now end that election to answer that question, to look around somebody, even if the Paul Mashatile EFF question was real, how do they work around? There could be somebody that they could work around. I mean, the first problem they have is that they have a president who is uh, overburdened by the job, who is available, but he doesn't care enough, he's not passionate enough, he's not driven enough uh, to do uh, that job. That's the question the ANC has uh, to deal with. Whether it's to who comes next, I mean, the other question is more important, even by the way, uh, to, 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 to comprehend, uh, to, 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 to deal with. Then they can start looking at finding uh, as to who's going to come next. So the question of Mashatile, uh, Malema, you might even be delaying it. So, okay, you put Ramaphosa there because you're blocking the Mashatile, the EFF factor. But Ramaphosa doesn't have it in him to last a second term as the president of the ANC and of the country. So you might as well be waiting for a very powerful force. Uh, to build up uh, just to push him 
uh, often offers of violently and you end up with that Mashatile, EFF, coalition, or whatever that uh, nobody is preparing for. Who is South Africans who also been crippled by that. That uh, this uh, might be just a terrible thing to happen and then we're not even preparing uh, for that. We might just be waiting for it uh, to be unleashed quite forcefully. Sure. And um, I see that well, now again, that what happened was that military um, officials from South Africa are again in Russia. They're not helping their case with the um, Americans, are they? No, they're quite blasé about uh, everything. I mean, we've had uh, 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 the, uh, the first, uh, the lady are around us in, the, in December, offensive to the Americans, and they said as much uh, in, in January. Now the news of our guys in, in Russia again, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's one, it's a question of uh, the South African government saying one thing and then in reality uh, and carrying on to do something else. And the risk uh, that is really playing uh, with uh, our economic interests and, and about uh, our future. What's happening is really we are shown to be unfit uh, to play in, uh, in, in global politics. All the domestic issues that we've been struggling with, uh, with a uh, really lethargic government and that uh, doesn't do very easy things. Uh, it, it's been carrying on from the Zuma years you know, where the government goes to, uh, to court on very simple things that he loses and stuff like that. The same thing is uh, is being now being portrayed in the in the international and the, and the international sphere, and the, that's what we're seeing. Uh, the foreign policy that is no way really have no foreign policy. Uh, um, the, we don't even make it up as as we go. We just don't even pretend uh, to be uh, to be doing um, anything. So we are caught up in a very very terrible uh, place where we are bound uh, to be hit quite a bit. So what do you think is behind Mr. Ramaphosa's inertia? Because some people said, even when he's at big functions, when you talk about all the stuff we've been talking about, he's got a side of tunes out. As soon as you mentioned buffaloes and stuff like that, he pipes up. Um, and also, it seems that his advisors are leaving, it's a revolving door of advisors leaving his office. W what is really going on there? Yeah, I and mean, he's been around, what, six years now. Actually, when you look at what, what we've achieved, uh, look, he achieved quite a bit uh, in helping South Africa uh, block at the continuation of the, the Zutas and uh, in touch of, uh, of the government and brought in a new confidence around uh, the state and the appointment of people in charge of the prosecuting authority and the revival uh, of the uh, revenue uh, service. And uh, really, he deserves uh, credit uh, for that part. But then as to anything else, you really couldn't be born at. Uh, he, he, he's not they're really interested in managing uh, his employees, his direct reports, the people he chose uh, to be uh, in, in, in his cabinet. And now when he's tired of that, he creates new layers around the, the presidency, the infrastructure unit, uh, there's economic advisors and, and, and an advisory unit in addition to having an economic advisor. And mind you, the government's economic advisor is a national treasury. So you've got a full on institution that should be advising him now. He creates his layers and layers. And what we've seen now is uh, that he's run out of people around him. Uh, they've left. Uh, the contract uh, have uh, expired. Look, the question is, did he want to renew the contracts of the people uh, who've uh, expired? Anybody who cares about that kind of job, when the, the contracts are expiring in his office, uh, he needs to look into that three months ahead of time. What am I going to do around it? But you don't want to create a sense that uh, everybody is left and there's no one uh, around you. So it's a really a PR disaster that in these didn't uh, it need uh, 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 right now. Whether or not it changes uh, anything, he's been getting, it looks like he's been needing uh, good advice. Uh, and whether or not he's been listening to that is uh, he's, he's another thing. I mean, he's built up a presidency that is really strong, a lot of people around various uh, units and uh, various uh, 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 functions. But the biggest thing is what happens to all that information, all those PowerPoint presentations about the energy crisis, what happens with that? So I, I get a sense that there's still a, almost like a broken telephone kind of system. And the, 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 all the academic information doesn't move through into the bu bureaucracy. Now he's appointed a minister of uh, electricity, <laughs> goes around and he struggles uh, with the, they feel that he's a minister, he doesn't have a job yet. He's still, uh, he, it, 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 he's got a job, but no work. Uh, so he's just, he really, he, he's just really, he doesn't look good. Uh, look good uh, track. He doesn't look like we're a serious, we're a serious country with a serious government. Yeah, so all in all, in all you, is your summary, yeah, not as 
serious government and they're not moving forward to anything and they just you know weighing themselves down with paperwork and commissions and nothing is happening yeah that's uh, the, the the stage of the city of the of, of the that i'm a force uh, the uh, government look i i'm not convinced he wants the job i don't see somebody i'm surprised he gets up every morning you know see these bloody public events and but i think he's overweight i mean he's really is overburdened uh, by the weight, uh, the sheer weight uh, of uh, the responsibility. Uh, maybe he's not the kind of guy who can kick things uh, into gear and, uh, and and we move. He pre- perhaps also, when you like that, it's fine. Many leaders are like that. But you have to appoint smart. Uh, you appoint a doer around you, uh, somebody who's going to be driven, who's going to do all these things and follow up on your vision. And these wonderful things he said in the past about Tumamina and uh, all these great things that he, he uh, we wanted to do. But right now we end up with talk and talk. So in this case, what is just going? What's happened with this uh, America Russia thing? He loses a bit uh, in terms of uh, the capability of his voice and the things uh, that he says. It will be harder for him uh, to, uh, to to say things that are, are are believable. I've checked a few key announcements in the State of the Nation address around the red tape, uh, um, meta climate change, and uh, all, all these things. They all look gimmicky. And now more people will start latching on to that. Okay, uh, this guy really says things that are not uh, 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 believable. Uh, and then he just carries on and carries on. And the AC loses uh, one or two more percentage points uh, than he, he, he would have lost uh, without him acting like this. Yep, as you say, there's a long year ahead for the election. So we're going to keep on touching base with you. Sam Mkukeli, thank you so much. Thank you.